Good evening. It's Thursday the 5th of January and it's time for the news on RIC2. A flurry of diplomatic activity is intensifying in Nicosia, Athens, Ankara and New York four days before the scheduled start of the Cyprus issue negotiations in Geneva to be followed by a conference on security and guarantees. During a three-hour meeting of the Advisory National Council of Political Leaders, President Anastasiades informed members of the body on two opinions requested by legal experts, according to which the continuation of the Republic of Cyprus is not affected by the participants at the Geneva Conference on Security and Guarantees, which include the Republic, the two communities and the three guarantor powers, Greece, Turkey and Britain. As reported, the president also informed leaders about a letter to the UN Secretary General making clear that he will be attending the Geneva deliberations and conference both as elected president of the Republic of Cyprus and leader of the Greek Cypriot community. Following the meeting, Deputy Government Spokesman Viktoras Babulobolos said that the legal opinions requested by both Nicosia and Athens fully vindicate the Cyprus government's positions and put political party concerns to rest. Babulobolos said that the president, as the defender of unity on the home front, will not be going into public argument with leaders on criticism they have expressed. The deputy government spokesman refrained from directly confirming the Anastasiadis letter to the Secretary General and said that the Cyprus government is taking a number of steps to secure everything before the Geneva negotiations. Meanwhile, in New York, the new UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres will be holding talks with Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu at 10 this evening, followed tomorrow by a meeting with Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Gorchaz, scheduled for 11 in the evening. The meetings are considered preparatory in light of the Geneva Conference on Cyprus next week and the participation of Athens and Ankara as guarantors of the 1960 London-Zurich agreements. Gotchaz and Sivosoglu spoke on the phone this morning and agreed to meet tomorrow to set the framework of the Geneva talks. Prior to his departure for New York, the Greek Foreign Minister discussed security and guarantees issues with British Undersecretary for Foreign Affairs, Alan Duncan. Meanwhile, Duncan wrote on Twitter that Britain is working with the United Nations with the goal of maintaining the momentum on achieving lasting peace in Cyprus. The British official said that he conveyed London's support to the UN Chief Special Advisor on Cyprus, Espan Barthaida. He also referred to his talks with the Greek Foreign Minister, saying he had a constructive discussion with Nikos Gotchaz in light of the Geneva Conference. Turkey will not agree to making any kind of concessions in order to achieve a solution of the Cyprus issue, said Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu. In an interview with the Turkish news agency, Cavusoglu said that a settlement can only be achieved through common understanding between the two sides. The Turkish Foreign Minister insisted on the continuation of guarantees, noting that Ankara will be taking into account both sides' security concerns. He further claimed that any Cyprus issue deal must become EU primary law. In Brussels, the European Commission expressed its readiness to support the Geneva talks on the settlement of the Cyprus issue. Commission Deputy Spokeswoman Natasa Berto said that for the time being, she is not in a position to disclose details on who will represent the EU at the Geneva conference and under what capacity. According to sources in Brussels, the union will be represented by Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker and Foreign Policy Chief Federica Mogherini. <laughs> Turkish police shot dead two attackers and were searching for a third late this afternoon after a car bomb exploded outside a courthouse in the Aegean coastal city of Izmir, killing two people and wounding at least ten. Those killed were a police officer at the scene and a courthouse employee. The gunmen were killed during a firefight with security forces inside the courthouse. The bombing comes less than a week after a gunman shot dead 39 people at a nightclub in Istanbul on New Year's Day in an attack claimed by Islamic State. The gunman is still at large. Turkey faces multiple security threats. It has been hit by a series of bombings over the past 18 months, some of them blamed on Islamic State, others on Kurdish militants.
France ordered a massive cull of ducks in three regions most affected by a severe outbreak of bird flu as it tries to contain the virus, which has been spreading quickly over the past month. All free-range ducks, as well as geese, will be slaughtered in an area in the southwestern part of the country. France, which has the largest poultry flock in the European Union, has reported 89 outbreaks of the highly contagious H5N8 bird flu virus so far. Some 800,000 of the birds, out of a total population of around 18 million in the whole of the southwest, will be culled in the coming week. It could rise further if the bird flu virus cannot be maintained, stressing that there are 1.3 million birds in the targeted area. Now a look at the weather. Clear skies tomorrow, but turning increasingly overcast. Winds will be moderate, northeasterly to southeasterly, force 4, and in windward regions, strong force 5 over slight seas. Temperatures will rise to 16 Celsius inland, 18 in coastal regions, and 5 over the mountains. The depth of snow on Mount Olympus is 75 centimetres and 65 in Trodos Square. That's all from us here. Join us tomorrow for more news in English. Have a very good evening.